I wasn't aware of the Stonewall riots until some months later. In fact, in late 1969, I read a newspaper report in my hometown of Melbourne, Australia, which said that thousands of homosexuals had marched through New York the previous night to demand equal rights. Um, that was the beginning of my consciousness about an LGBT movement. When he said he was involved with GLA, I just thought, well, in my view, I just thought there were a lot of, you know, um, ex-public school boys with too much time and too much money, really. I didn't really rate them. And anyway, for me at that time, all stuff around gay liberation and uh, equality was something that would naturally get sorted out as the revolution happened. It was a huge relief to find GLF. It was very life-changing for me. I wasn't in GLF for very long, probably about six months. It was a very intense time, though, and it changed my life in a way. I suppose joined GLF, you know, I mean, did anybody actually join it because it wasn't like that formal? But I went in and I just knew I was home. I was one of about 40 people from the Gay Liberation Front who helped organise the first UK Pride March, which took place in London in July 1972. Our slogan was, gay is good, modelled on the black rights slogan, black is beautiful. The march, the 1972 march, building up to it was really exciting. Uh, we were not saying we weren't scared, of course we were scared, but we were also excited. We knew we had the power. We knew that we could do this. I think that first Pride March through London, which I think was the first one in the UK, um, was quite scary because there were only a few hundred of us. Again, mostly men, but also several dozen women. And I don't think I was prepared for that level of harassment from bystanders, people watching on. And also there was such a heavy police presence and the police at that stage was so um, harassing of lesbians and gay men. We were very apprehensive about whether that march would work. Who would turn up? You know, we were fearful that maybe just like a few hundred of us, mm. perhaps not even that. Uh, we were also very concerned about the reaction of members of the public. Would we be attacked and abused? And what about the police? You know, this was an era when most aspects of gay male life were still criminalised. There was such a fiery energy, such zest and such will for change. And it was very, very emotionally liberating. And we were all very determined that we would do our best to change society radically. And generally within GLF, I think there was a feeling of being very much for not simply equality within an unequal system, but having the ability to unite with others to make radical change. People rose to become people who led a particular campaign or a particular thing, and then they would fade away and somebody else would come forward for the next thing. Of course, inevitably, as in most groups, some people were always the ones with the loudest voices and were always the one to speak and there was a, there were definitely voices that were heard more than others. About one third were overtly hostile. We had abuse shouted at us. Some people even threw bottles, cans and coins. Uh, another third were actually surprisingly supportive. We got applause and cheers from some members of the public passing by and standing on the pavement. And then the other third, well, it was really hard to tell. They were more or less, I think for the most part, gawping in disbelief. They couldn't believe that gay people would dare show themselves in public, let alone demand equal rights. That was a completely new thing for most of those people in the street who saw us that day. There was that sense of outrageousness and of course then you, you also knew that you were invisible unless you, you made yourself visible. So apart from speaking out, you wore badges. It was really important to wear a badge to be visible and I still believe that's true.
a lot of women felt our place wasn't with gay men, but was with women in women's liberation. And I remember taking the side of the point of view that it was important for women, for lesbians, to be on that first march because we needed visibility and it might encourage other women who saw us. So we were very determined, and I think it just increased our unity, solidarity, and, uh, yeah, determination. I would like to see a pride march that really focused on international solidarity with people all over the world who are being persecuted and oppressed for their sexual orientation, gender or gender identity. What concerns me is the treatment of LGBT refugees and asylum seekers in this country and the way that they're often treated when they're here and then sent back to situations of great danger. The work we do is roughly divided. About 50% of it is LGBTI focused and about 50% is focused on other human rights, equality and civil liberties issues. About half of it involves work within the UK and another half uh, involves work overseas, supporting democracy, human rights and LGBTI movements in countries like Russia, Uganda, Iran, Pakistan and Nigeria. The Rainbow Film Festival started in 2006. Um, it came about because we had been really trying hard with Shropshire Council to get something into the schools, um, just positive images. And at that time, the Director of Education, was she was really quite um, supportive. So we put on two films, which kind of spanned things. One was um, the one about Oscar Wilde, I think it was called Wilde. And the other one was called, you have to remind me, Jeff. Get Real. Get Real, which was about um, a boy coming out in a school. I think it was at Swindon. Anyway, Basingstoke. Basingstoke, that's right. So it was kind of like, you know, looking across the generations as to the different experience. And it went really well. We held it in the main cinema in the town, which is called the Old Market Hall. And it, it filled, and there was a really lively discussion. So then we thought, actually, film is a good way of doing two things. It's, it's giving a message. It's a safe, comfortable place to be, because in the dark, you know, you can kind of think and feel um, what you like. Um, it's not terribly threatening, and it's an enjoyable space. And so we, we've built it and built it over the ten years. So now it's a whole weekend festival with about seven features, two shorts programmes and we always try and have at least two question and answers so try and get directors um, and the other thing is big visibility side to it because we always put big banners across the main streets of Shrewsbury saying lesbian and gay films from around the world and the first time we did it we thought you know Colonel Blimp from South Shropshire would definitely write in actually nothing happened and so it really is part of us becoming part of 
What is really? In places where we have tremendous repression on LGBT people, they are truly marches. Um, and in some places, they are more parades. Um, and so it straddles the fence. And I've had everything thrown at me, um, from eggs to urine to, you know, it's, and some of that I consider a badge of, uh, of, of honor. One of the experiences here in Europe um, just a couple years ago was in Vilnius. It was the first Baltic Pride that was able to march in one of the downtowns of uh, of, of their country, of, of, of a major city, which was uh, a, a capital of uh, Lithuania. And um, the foreign minister from Sweden was with me. We were both targeted with eggs. And of course, people were starting to clean off her eggs. And the press was not really reporting that this Pride March was taking. There was tremendous numbers of counter protesters. Not that many people really supporting the LGBT crowd. Um, and. Uh, uh, the press wasn't reporting it, so I said, don't clean the eggs off me. I kind of heard my uncle in the background. I said, don't clean the eggs off me. And when we got up to the stage, you know, I said, you know, you, look, you can throw eggs at me and the Swedish foreign minister. You can stop, you could send bullets to my uncle. You can stop the messenger, but you can never stop the message. We will all be equal. And reluctantly, that was the front page of all of their papers. So even when you get this type of counter protest, you can turn that around to our advantage and, and get out our important message, which is that equality is of benefit to everybody. Personally and professionally, the most important message that people can have is that they play a significant role in the social change movement of our time. Um, even if it's just simply being out in their own sphere or supporting people who are out. Um, and, uh, and that there's nothing small about that. There's nothing insignificant about that. That is what has changed. Um, uh, in particular, for instance, marriage equality. If you ask our Supreme Court justices in the United States, which they were asked, why did they vote in favor of marriage equality? Uh, Justice uh, Ginsburg, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, it's because we know LGBT people. If you had asked us 10 years ago, we would, have, we would have not seen this as an issue because we didn't know them, they weren't visible. When we're in town or walking around town, we hold hands because A, I like to hold Peter's hand because we are partners. Um, and the other thing is because I think it's good for people to get used to the idea. And actually, we've been doing this for a while now. And at first, we did get quite a lot of looks, actually. That wasn't unusual, was it? And you can mm. see out of the corner of your eye that people are sort of looking down and, and looking sideways glances at you. But actually, either I've stopped caring or people have stopped looking. Actually, I'm not sure which it is. Mm. Probably a bit of both, probably. Mm. So. So it's just about being visible again, isn't it, really? And people getting used to the idea. People just aren't used to things that are unusual. What I hope people will take away from this event is it recharges their activism batteries by meeting with lots of other activists. For those who are not activists, and more importantly, those who are not members of the LGBT community, it gives them a really good idea of our history it shows the diversity of the community, but at the t same time showing we're all just human beings, often with very much the same aspirations and dreams as everybody else. It, it's been really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I've certainly learned a lot about, about history of, of, of LGBT people, which um, I, I wasn't really aware of much of the history before now. It kind of puts it into perspective, really, like, as Lisa said, how far we've come, because it was really awful in, like, the past, and some, there is still inequality and everything, but it's a lot better now than it was. I was quite interested in the old LGBT history, like the very old LGBT history, because like nowadays we do have it a lot better. But in the past it was illegal to be gay or lesbian or bi, so people had to hide it, and I just really wanted, was interested in how they survived and how they lived. 
I, I think also um, visibility is very important. I mean, um, <clears throat> certainly for me personally, um, I found that uh, learning about other people who, has helped me come to terms with myself a lot, a lot more. Um, so I, I, I think it's really important for other uh, young people, especially in, in Shrewsbury, to, to know that there is that, that there is stuff going on. We forget when we go to these celebrations where it all started from and what the purpose of it is. And I think Liverpool Pride is doing a good job this year because it's going back to what it means. It's going back to the march rather than the stuff that pads around it. So I would kind of encourage every other Pride organiser to go back to, to the origins and to the roots and to think about um, why, are we, why are we doing this. It's about visibility and political activism and making change. It's not about commercial enterprise. We had to take on a fairly clear label, gay, lesbian. Maybe now for these next generations, those can sort of um, dissolve a little bit. It has never been about me or the work that I've done. It's been about the collective, cumulative effort of tens of thousands of LGBTI people across the length and breadth of Britain. And of course, our very important and much valued straight allies. If I was going to Pride now, I think I'd like it to be called Lesbian and Gay Pride again, or LGBT Pride if that's what people prefer, and I'd like it to get its radical edge back. I'd like to see less of the commercialisation, less of the kind of famous pop stars appearing. I don't care whether you're disabled or not, I don't care whether you're Jewish mm. or not. Well mm. actually I want you to care. Mm. I want mm. you to care that we are all different and I want you to celebrate the difference. Mm. Originally it was our festival and it was our event and we sang and played and danced there and it was far more of a grassroots movement. It's really important for the confidence and self-affirmation of LGBTI people that they know about the past, that they understand where we've come from, the triumphs, the tribulations, the gains and the setbacks we've gone through to get where we are today. History empowers the future.